hey guys good morning my battery is low and i'm going to a funeral <laughs> yes i'm going to the funeral of a uh, someone who have um done a lot in our community he who believed in me before he died he had childhood and whosoever is and believes in me shall never die the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning we are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into this world, and we take nothing up. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Friend and fellow Ethereum. 
but as we reflect on this journey, we remember the life that was defined by selflessness, compassion, and an unwavering dedication to help others even in times of personal need. I consider it a very special honor and privilege to be asked by a Chester family to do this honorably today. Church, it is my humble opinion that my numbered years, in my numbered years I should say, I have been to literally hundreds of funerals. Some were very, very pleasant, quite terrible. Some were quite a drag. Some were your relatives and friends, their voice of their loved ones, as we have heard already this morning. Some way one can almost feel that it is a stretch of the imagination to find nice things to say about the dead. Can you imagine that Chester, if he could care, would be listening to the nice things that he could speak about him? Today, all of us, I mean all of us, if we're given the chance, can find something wonderful to say about Chester. I wish he was really here to hear it. But if I knew Chester, he would have none of it. Chester was the most self-serving individual. He was caring and outreach to everyone. Self-praise was never part of his upbringing and his being. I got to know Chester when I started secondary school. He was a powerful young man. And I was a tiny crack. So I found comfort sitting next to him. And you will understand why. You know what I said a while ago. Go get Chester. The problem will be solved right away. Chester shared everything he had with all of us, male as well as female in the classroom. He was the boy of the class. He was the leader from day one. Brilliant and outspoken, an attention getter, and a doer, above all, a doer, which portrayed his entire life. We attended school funded activities and we participated in fundraising on behalf of our school. And I want to tell you something about the school that we started at. We started in what has become the Seventh-day Adventist primary school. It was nothing like what we see here today. Simply, it was four walls, no more than five or six feet high, when the shed moved to top of it. We fondly called it the campaign. But we learned under those circumstances. We had a sense of belonging. The news of the, I should go back a bit. That school, knowing that it was low, and it was galvanized over our heads, and it was just a shed, with two doors, no windows, was very, very hot. One day in class, Chester, or so as he was, said to the teacher, why didn't they build a window in this wall so that you can get some air? And the teacher responded, I'll put the window now. To his surprise and that of the principal, Mr. Cox, when they returned after lunch, we had a huge window under the wall. <laughs> that was no joke. It provided the ventilation we needed. But we had to fix it. He was always ready and their assistance when needed. He had a club together. 
Cable systems and moral support to members when needed. I can tell you things for sure because I helped with admin work for the club when Chester was president and Lawrence the secretary. The secretary had to do all correspondence. That's where I that's where I used to help Lawrence. It was a pleasure working along with Chester in Rotary as he proved to be a good person at heart and gave service above himself. He was well liked by all the district governors of the National who came in contact with him. For his amazing work and dedication, Chester was awarded the highest award given by Rotary International the Paul Harris Fellowship Award. He indeed lived the life of the true material. I am saying my final goodbye to my grandpa. As we let you to rest, grandpa, the tears fall and our hearts remember all the ways you cared for others around you. As we say goodbye to you, grandpa, we recall the joy and the laughter, the smiles and the tears you share through the years. As we say our final farewell, Grandpa, we honor you for your hard work and the integrity you brought to everything you did. As we wipe the tears from our eyes, Grandpa, we give thanks for the man we knew, an incredible man who will be forever in our hearts. I love you, Grandpa. Rest in peace. My poem is about my grandfather. My grandfather's friends will never be forgotten. His words and actions, strong and true. When life was hard, he was a man who pushed through and never complained. His selflessness will be forever remembered. Always putting others before him in everything. When time was up, he was a man who was brave and again he never complained. His memories will always live up. As soon as he talks in the world, he will always remember. The lessons of Jesus, humility, humility and service. When people were wanted, he was never unmoved. People were wanted, he was a man who met the needs, even when he was in need. He never moved. Take your, take your rest now, Grandpa. You fought long and hard. Your strength was remarkable to the end. I will love you forever. I will always be your first grandpa. Rest in peace. Tribute my daughter, Queen Kaya. It is not easy to stand in there. It's not easy to distribute. It's on. For those of us, for those of you who look to me, I am his last son. Of am the last one of our Mr. Peter. Or as I would affectionately call him, Mr. Daddy Peters. I remember the first time I called my father by his name, and the look he gave me, I had to quickly say, Yes, Daddy, because he was like, Who are you calling Mr. Peters with his serious name? I had to be like, Yes, Daddy. I couldn't help but laugh, but, but laugh at his seriousness. And who knows, Daddy, when it's serious time, it's serious time. I remember when I was studying 22, I wanted to go to the cake and I said that I am going to message Mr. Peter to make this cake for me. So I sent him the message and instead of messaging back, he called and asked which flavor you like. And I said, Charlie. He said, okay, I got you. The following day, which was my birthday, I received my birthday meeting. And at the end of the message, he said, you can come for your and, with, and by the end of 18, I said, I love you, my daughter. Who knows my father knows that nothing could have held him back from getting things done. Not 
even the situation of being confined in the future. Nothing was impossible for him to accomplish. Sometimes when I go over, we would already be cooked and washed every little possible thing you can take off. I asked him, Daddy, how? And he said, All I need is your strength. And believe me, he had that strength with him. I went up many minutes with my father, but as I told my sister, if I had a million dollars, I would bring him back alive. I would. <laughs> Of the hotel and was unfortunately stung by a jellyfish. 
My father promptly rushed me to the hospital in the back of his vehicle, sorry, in my distress. I began screaming and kicking in the back of the window, prompting my father to assertively declare, if you break it, I will break it. His phone words immediately quieted me in that moment. I realized what it was to endure pain while striving to maintain composure. I consider myself fortunate for my father's active involvement in my extracurricular activities, which he consistently encouraged me to pursue. His encouragement led me to engage in tennis, a sport that became my favorite, as well as to participate in the sailing program called Better Youth and the Sea, organized by the Rotarians. My father, alongside his fellow Rotarian, was dedicated to nurturing young minds through various educational programs and extracurricular activities. I fondly remember how my father motivated me to participate in tennis, which allowed me to compete in tournaments on the mainland Peninsula from a young age. I achieved noteworthy success, placed third in the singles male on the 16th category, and second in the doubles tournament. It was evident that my father took great pride in my interest in tennis. He often invited me to play with him and his more experienced friends. One particular incident stands out in my memory. During a doubles match, my father advised me to keep my head in front of play. However, yes, I'm talking in trouble. However, I couldn't help but glance back at him. As the same goes, not here in the field. And I certainly learned this lesson the hard way. As he swung to the ball, I just turned in time to see the ball connect to the racket and then unfortunately strike me directly in the eye. Amidst my cries of pain, my father's response was simply, You should have listened. After taking me home, he placed ice on my eye and inquired if I would be ready for our next match the following week. I finally recall that moment which perfectly illustrates the blend of his unwavering encouragement and tough love. These memories reflect not only the joy of my youth, but also the invaluable lessons my father imparted. I honor him today with a heart full of gratitude and love. Your son, Carlson. My journey to my father. Daddy was a pillar of strength in our lives. He had a way of setting clear boundaries and expectations, teaching us the importance of discipline and responsibility. Yet, beneath that firm exterior lay a heart full of understanding. He knew that life was always straightforward, but recognized our struggles and faith. When we faced challenges, he taught us to face each situation with a steadfast spirit and find our own path. He said it was okay to stumble, but never complete. Throughout his life, Daddy exemplified selflessness in everything he did. He often put the needs of others before his own. This was also shown by example. For the 12 years, he was reachable until the time of his death. Through the years, I saw my father display a strength that many of us would not have had had we been in that situation. He was content. Beyond his family, his heart extended to the community. His actions spoke volumes about the kind of person he was, always ready to lend a hand or offer a listening ear. He showed us the true strength, sorry, he showed us that true strength lies not just in personal achievement, but in lifting others up along the way. A lot of persons would have been on the receiving end of how my father shaped their lives in one way or another. Now, let me tell you about Chester being my father. I love both my parents, but that was my love. You know they say, um, they're all connected to their father. So I was that girl. The home was filled with so much warmth and love, not just to us, but to anyone who visited. There are the memories of Sunday picnics uh, on Spring Beach, something we look forward to as children. 
food is fun, laughter, and more food. That it was always the man in the grave. Things are making bad with you. If you had any fear, I think she would tell you how many times she cried when her mom told her that she had to go home. She always wanted to make sure she had a taste of her body before she left. Never mind she was afraid of that, and we surprised her with bed, but the food brought her up from under there. The new music session at the next thing I look forward to. But we were not listening to what that used to refer to as boo music and uh, what you young people, not still young, but what you young people like to listen to. It was country jam session, and those who knew that he would know that he loved his country music. When the music started, that he would lift me up. I was his father, not mommy. He used to lift me up at the mommy to sit up. Alright, when the music started, sorry, I used to be his dad's fan until he was ready to put a side of that, he put me a side of that to mommy. You know, mommy and daddy actually made me cry a few times. Now they used to take me to Industry Beach, to so, um, this place where Ricky and Don used to operate, I think many of you know. So they take me out of the house and they get with them, and they put me to sit and put them on the dance floor. Now I'm accustomed to having my dad to carry a toe, so why don't you put me to sit now that you take me out? So I would cry all the time before they make me dance floor, and then I had to put mommy down and come again. <laughs> right? I tell you, it was like a very serious strike. Right? Um, but um, you would often hear my cries, you probably think I was spoiled, but you would often hear that the would spend a lot at spoiling child. He didn't do that. I used to get my lips. Two occasions I tried to play woman. The biggest mistake of my life. The one time in the living room that was watching TV. And I was not too far from me. Now, probably this is the proximity of the chair and the center table. And I am probably somewhere where counsel is. And I wanted to go from the center table. So that he decided to call me. And I ignored him all the time to call. Until he eventually got to me and he turned around and said something to that which I really should not have said. No, I can't say the truth. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Bear with me. Um, okay, when that he realized what I said, he definitely reached for the remote himself, <laughs> but I was not spared. Another time I did something really bad. I can't say again, huh? I was in form three at this time. But you see that brother mine, he gets to get it plenty of things, eh? But I was the one who got the back end of it. Alright? <laughs> Alright, when I got to understand what it was, um, that charged that me. Now me thinking I was fast and could get away from that, ran into the bedroom. It's better to just sit up and take it. So I ran into the bedroom and Jump up on the bed and run to the back on. So for those of you who knew Daddy, how he was there, Daddy just had to take off his belt and his belt was extended. <laughs> my arms are not And Daddy extended his belt and sailed it across the bed after me. Listen, I never tried anything again, huh? Um, sorry? Yes, so that he took off his belt and he came you not, he said the belt right at me and he made a connection with my behind it better than what did he tell him to his offering right now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Right, so even though it was a little miserable, Daddy taught me that respect is a must. And he never compromised when it came to discipline. Even when it came to discipline with his grandkids, that was not sliding by the way. To be honest, I wish we had more parents like that. Blossoming and becoming an adult, he was still present and still a very important part of my life. We had a relationship. I opened up to him about a few things in my life and he guided me as best as he could have. He really was an understanding man, a fair man. Our conversations were really close to me. 
There are so many memories I have with Dad, but today is just not enough time. But let me see. Dad loved us.
Would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will take you to myself. So that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From no one, you do not know him, and have seen him.
They are kept in this way at all times. Yeah, we are here 
celebrating the um, the life of Chester Nicholas Nicholas Peters, aka Melly. In the meantime, as I prepare to bring him in, just take a look. <laughs> Enjoy the beautiful scenery from the cemetery. Yes, the village straight ahead on the top up there. What is it called? Part of it <laughs> is Union Estate, another part they call Broad Road. And down in to the far left. Hmm, I think Pretoria from over there. Yeah. yeah. Can we just gather round, please, as we come to do the final part? Final part of the service. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Happy are the dead who dies in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the records of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death to whom we can turn for help, but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ, we now commend to Almighty God, our brother, Mr. Peters, Chester Nicholas Peters, and we commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your beloved son shall come again in judgment, but this our brother, Mr. Peters, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If any of the people to him that is able to keep us from falling and to prevent us from all this before the presence of his glory, we will see in joy. To the only wise God and Saviour, glory and majesty, and now and forever. Amen. Start singing. Start singing. First hymn on your sheet. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair 
When they save the world shall gather over on the other show And the roll is all up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is all up yonder When the roll is all up yonder When the roll is all up yonder When the roll is all up yonder, I'll be there Beyond the skies and the roll is all up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is all up yonder, Let us labor for the master from the north till setting. Let us store from the river and shall share. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder.
right, that's right, that's we right. We went crowning with roses, crowning with roses. Oh, yeah. Give me a